Hello, CTS Net community. My name is Dr. Brian Mitzman, and I'm a thoracic surgeon with the University of Utah Health System and the Huntsman Cancer Center. I'm also an associate editor with CTS Net. I'm here today to teach you how to create an easy 3D reconstruction of your CT scans. This is going to take minimal effort on your part, very little time, and it's going to be completely free. It doesn't get much better than that. The first question to ask is, why should you be making a 3D reconstruction? These are great for teaching purposes. If you have trainees on your service, whether they're medical students, residents, or fellows, 3D visualization will really help these trainees understand why you're making the decisions that you are for that patient. These are great for patient education. No matter how much time you spend in the office scrolling through a CT scan, showing a patient a 3D reconstruction really helps them understand the planned approach. Finally, these are great for operative planning for complex cases. Whether you have numerous small nodules that you need to find in the lung, or a complex mass and you're trying to decide whether to do a minimally invasive or an open approach, a 3D reconstruction will help you make your decision. We're going to break down this tutorial into several parts. First, we'll talk about some of the hardware requirements for you to use the software. Then we'll talk about some different software platforms. And finally, we'll go through step-by-step -step on how to make a 3D reconstruction for several different cases. The current computer that I'm using is a 2019 iMac. As you can see here, it's a pretty standard computer, except that I've upgraded the memory to 40 gigabytes of RAM. This is not necessary. It will make things go a little bit faster, but I've done uh, the same workflow with a 2014 MacBook with only four gigabytes of RAM. So please don't think that you need a high-end computer to use this software. There are multiple different software platforms that you can use to create a 3D reconstruction. The software platform that we'll be using today is called Horos. It's an open source, completely free piece of software that you can download. Unfortunately for all you Windows users, it's only made for the Mac. That said, there are numerous other platforms that you could use even on the PC. There are two very high-end uh, software packages. One is called Mimix by a company Materialize, and another Vitria by a company named Vital. Both of these are fairly expensive to license, but are extremely powerful for 3D reconstruction purposes. Please do not go out there and just purchase these pieces of software. Many hospitals actually already have licenses to use both of them. Check with your radiology department. If you have a structural heart program, there likely is already a license and you may be able to use it completely for free just by talking to these departments. There are some other software packages out there as well. One is 3D Slicer, which is also free, and another is called Osirix. Osirix now requires a license, but Horos is actually an open source version of Osirix. The first step to use any of the software packages is to obtain the DICOM files of the CT scan. That's D-I-C-O-M, all capital letters. This is just the storage file type that the PAC system uses to save CT scans. Many hospitals, uh, as a physician or a healthcare provider, will allow you to access these DICOM files and export them. Some won't. You may need to talk to your IT department or to your radiologist to find out the best way to export these DICOM files into whatever software package you decide to use. The other thing to keep in mind is that these DICOM files do contain protected health information. They should only be used on a hospital computer, and when possible, they should be completely anonymized. So let's get into the tutorial. The first thing I'm going to do is open up Horos. This is the main menu screen. This is where all your files will appear once you've imported the DICOM files into Horus. We're going to start off with this patient. The best CT scan for a 3D reconstruction is one that contains IV contrast or, if possible, a CT angio. For lung cancer specifically, most of our patients get non-contrast scans. It's still possible to create a 3D reconstruction depending on what you're trying to highlight. It just sometimes take, takes a little bit extra work. For this patient, we are going to open up an axial with IV contrast. Once you double click on the series that you would like, it will pop up. And I'm going to zoom out a little bit so we can see the entire axial. You have a toolbar up here that gives you a magnifying glass, shading window, and arrows to move it. When you first open this, it may take a minute or two for the entire series to load, so don't try scrolling uh, right away. You can either scroll by using your mouse wheel, the arrow keys, or the scroll bar up here. As you can see, this is a patient that was incidentally found to have a large mediastinal mass, but it does appear very well encapsulated. For mediastinal masses or anything related to the heart, a basic 3D construction is usually very easy. 
you don't even have to do any editing. Go up to the cog wheel right here for 2D, 3D, click that arrow, go to 3D volume rendering, and then give it a second to load. And it's going to reconstruct everything that was in that axial CT. Your toolbar, once the 3D reconstruction window opens, is up here on the top left. And there are a few tools I want to highlight. This first one, the gradient shade bar, is what actually controls your windowing. These arrows allow you to move the image around. Magnifying class lets you zoom in and out. And the cube will be the most commonly used tool. This allows you to rotate the image on its axis. Finally, the scissors here allow you to cut away a part of the image, and I'll show you how to use that a little later on. First thing I'm going to do is go to the shading tool, and let's give back all the subcute tissue and all the skin. We're going to shade coat completely out. So this is what you, you usually start with. So now let's go back down, take all of that away, take away the muscle, and what we're going to be left here is mostly the bony structures, the heart, and that mass. And we could use the cube now to rotate it around. And you can see where the mediastinal mass is sitting on top of the aorta. Pretty simple. But let's say you want to see that mediastinum a little better. We don't need the uh, hemithorax on either side for this scan, so let's cut those away. We're going to click the scissor, and you're going to basically just circle what you want to get rid of and then click Delete. Now you can see that's gone, and we can rotate, and we can see the mediastinum better. Now you're going to keep using that scissor and rotating around to get rid of what you don't want. We'll get rid of the left side, we'll get rid of the table, let's get rid of the liver, We'll work on getting rid of the spine. And as you can see, this is pretty easy. It's a very straightforward, manual way to edit a scan. And again, for mediastinal masses, it's pretty easy to do. And we're almost done cleaning this up. We just need to get rid of the sternum. Rotate around this way, get it from this side. A little bit left just because the mass was right up against it. I'm going to show you some more detailed, precise ways to edit these 3D, 3D reconstructions later in the tutorial. But again, this is just the easiest, fastest way to build a 3D recon. Done. You can see here we're left with the heart and our mass, and we could rotate it completely around for better visualization. You can now export it as a video or even just as a picture. I'm going to bump up the detail level just a touch. And you could also play with the windowing now as well to add back a little more detail if you went down too far before. That's it. When I close out of the 3D reconstruction window, what you're going to see is everything that we've removed is gone from the axial. And there's no way to undo that at this point. So once you cut something out of the 3D recon, you can't go back and add it back in without starting over. So let's start over. To start over, we're going to close out of this axial window and go back to the original menu screen. Now we can reselect that axial scan that we had started with before. And it should be back to its baseline. We'll zoom out again. So let's say you want to be a little more precise. What we're going to do is scroll down to where the mass starts. Right about here. This is the top of the thymus right here. We're going to click this arrow to the right, and we're going to pick the Closed Polygon tool. Now you're going to start 
clicking to put dots around the, the, uh, where the tumor is going to be. And when you connect the polygon, you'll get a little menu to pop up. We're going to rename this. You can pick all ROIs in this image, mass one. And we're actually going to make it so that anything else that I highlight going forward is going to be named mass one. And it's going to be included in this ROI. So we pick set default ROI name. We're going to make everything mass one for now. Now using your arrow keys, go down a few slices, say about three or four, and we're going to do it again. So place these dots around your tumor. Now if you put uh, the circle down and you don't like how it looks, you could always adjust any of these. Or you could add in more dots. Just click on the line and another one will appear. Again, go down three or four slices and let's do it again. Pretty good. A few more slices. Couple more. And finally, right at the bottom here. We can just highlight the edge of the thymus. Now to fill in the rest of these, they're all labeled mass one. We go to ROI, down to ROI volume, and then generate missing ROIs. Give that a second, and it should fill in on all the cuts that you didn't manually do. If there's any that you don't like, you can adjust them. Again, you could add more dots. You can move the ones that were automatically put in to get it to how you like. So that's step one. Our mass is pretty well circumscribed here. Now the next step is to get Horus to automatically segment uh, some of the CT scan so you don't have to manually cut everything away. We're going to go up to ROI, down to Grow Region 2D, 3D Segmentation. We're going to select 3D growing region. There's four different algorithms that you can use. Uh, so you can play around with these and figure out which one works best for what you're trying to do. I like threshold interval. Let's set this to about 110. You want it to show preview results when clicking, 3D preview, merge with existing brush ROIs, and then name it something. Since we're highlighting the heart, I'm going to call it heart. Now with this menu open, click somewhere where there's IV contrast. And anything that that's uh, in that Hounsfield unit range with that interval is going to highlight green. And if you scroll up and down, what you're trying to do is get the green to stay mostly in the heart and the major vessels and leave out everything else, the chest wall, the, sub, the soft tissue, so that all that will automatically get cut away. I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm going to click Compute to save it and close out of that window. Now you can see we have a new ROI called heart that's green. Now we want the heart in our reconstruction, so we're going to dilate up the green a little bit. Go up to ROI, down to brush ROIs and dilation. Now let's expand that by a, a radius of 10. And you can see all the green expanded out. So doing pretty good. We're going to catch a little bit of the spine here that we'll have to cut away later, but that's fine. Let's do it again. Brush ROIs, dilation. Let's do another 10 and see what happens. Getting there. It's a little more hard here I want to include, so let's do it one more time. And there are other tools that you can use to expand this out and to do more uh, precise increases uh, of your ROI, but this is by far the easiest way to do it. And I'm pretty happy with that. Now we want to get rid of everything that's not green. So go up to ROI, set pixel values. You're going to apply it to anything with the same name as a selected ROI. 
you want to set pixels that are outside of the green, so outside ROI, and set it to something that's going to be black, something that's going to be gone. So as low as it could, this could go, negative 1,024, click OK. This is going to run, and after a few seconds, you're going to see everything's going to disappear except for what you had highlighted green. Now, you could go to our 2D, 3D reconstruction tool, 3D volume rendering, and we have our reconstruction here, and we don't have to do all of that manual cutting. This still needs to be cleaned up a little bit, obviously, so let's use that scissor. Let's get rid of the liver. And we could get rid of the spine. Now remember, it didn't include the entire mass here because I didn't highlight that all in green. You can if you want, but what I wanted to show you was if you remember, we encircled that at the uh, beginning of that last step. So go to ROI, ROI Manager, and you should see Mass 1. Click the checkbox. This is going to take a second to uh, run, and then you could change it to whatever color you want, but it's basically filling in that circle that you originally made before for that tumor. So now you could see our thymoma sitting on the heart going up to the innominate vein, ready to go. And again, you could change the color if you would like. So now let's close out of this and go back to our main menu. So enough with mediastinal masses. Let's do something with the lung. I'm going to select this other case and then pick the axial series that has the most cuts. This one with 258 is likely our one millimeter cuts. We'll double click that to open it. And you could do these edits with any of the series. You could use the uh, coronal, the sagittal. I always found it easiest using the axial. We'll bring that over, we'll zoom out, and we will center. Again, this takes a second to load up the whole series before you could scroll through smoothly. And this is a non-contrast CT scan of a patient with multiple lung nodules and pleural nodules. You could see one over here. As we go all the way down, we have another one down here on the diaphragm. And then all the way up in the apex, there was this one. So as I was explaining before, there's multiple reasons for you to build this scan. It's great for teaching purposes for your trainee, good to show your patient to show exactly what you're planning on doing and where their lesions are, and then also good for operative planning. While you don't necessarily need it for a case like this, it will help you know exactly where you're going to be going uh, after these lesions. So the first thing we're going to do is, similar to the last case, we want to circle all these tumors. So let's start with this one. And we could zoom in on it a little bit to make it a little more precise. You can see it's starting right here. We're going to go to that closed polygon tool again. Go to ROI, set default ROI name, and let's call this lesion 1. And just like before, let's put some dots around it. Should probably only need three. Instead of doing the propagate ROI to, to fill in the slices like we did before, we're going to do every slice because these lesions are not very large. And Horos has trouble filling in the circles if there's only one or two that have been created. And it won't take us long because these, again, are pretty tiny. So just go down slice by slice, putting your dots in. Again, I don't love that one. I'll put an extra dot here to fix it. Almost done with lesion number one. There we go. So that's lesion number one. Now let's zoom back out. Center. Now we're going to go back to set default ROI. And let's change this to lesion number two. We're going to scroll all the way down to that diaphragm and do the same thing again. 
So here's the one down the diaphragm, closed polygon tool. Let's zoom in on it. And circle it, place your dots. It should only take you a minute or two to do. And because we changed the default ROI name, all the ones we're doing now are going to be in this lesion number two series. That. Probably the last one right about there. That looks pretty good to me. Let's zoom back out and now we're going to go all the way to the top and get that little guy we saw right there. Let's zoom in on it. You usually need at least two or three of these ROI circles for the 3D reconstruction to build it. So if you have a scan with really wide cuts and the nodule only pops up in one slice, you're not going to be able to make a great 3D reconstruction of it that's going to be completely accurate, but you can fudge it just a little bit to make it pop up. That looks pretty good to me. So now we have our three nodules highlighted. And actually, I forgot to change this uh, lesion number two to three. So what we do, we could go down to our tools, to arrow, select that, go to ROI, ROI rename, and you're going to pick all selected ROIs and change this to lesion three. The next one, ROI, ROI rename, lesion three, and finally, rename, lesion three. And you'll see why I want to do that later. So now we have lesion three done. We go down, zoom back out. We have lesion one here, and we had two down by the diaphragm. So all of our lesions are done. Now for this, we want to get rid of everything that's not the lung. So what we're going to do is go up to ROI and then grow region just like before. We're going to set it somewhere in the 150 range. 3D growing region, you could use the interval algorithm, which is my favorite, or you could try one of the others. Same settings as before, but make sure you rename this now something. Uh, uh, that's appropriate so it's going to be called lung and click somewhere on the lung tissue and all the lungs should highlight if it doesn't look right try again with a different interval based on whether too much is highlighted green or too little and both lungs should highlight along with your uh, airway click compute that creates the actual ROI now we could close the men menu and just like before, we want to expand this out a little bit. So ROI menu, brush ROIs, dilation, but only do this by two this time. Click OK. And now you can see the lung is filled in pretty nicely. And nothing else is selected except for the lung and the airway. ROI, set pixel values. ROIs with the same name as a selected. Make sure lung is selected outside and set it to something very negative because we want to get rid of everything that's not green. Click OK. It'll take a second and then it's going to get rid of uh, everything but the lungs and the airway. This looks pretty good to me. Now we're going to go to that 2D, 3D reconstruction window, 3D volume rendering. And this is what we have. That doesn't look so good. That's because it's not set for the lung right now. Go to 3D presets, changes from basic to soft tissue, and Horos has two built in that will work pretty nicely. So pick airway, the first airway option. Now we're set to airway mode, and there's two ways to modify it. You could use the visual graph down here, or you could just go and use your shading tool. Now we have a nice set of lungs. And we can modify this. 
to make it just look a little cleaner. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. So now let's add our tumors in. So go to ROI, ROI Manager. And remember we made three lesions, so you're gonna check all of these. And just like the last case, they take a few seconds to pop up. So let's do one, two, and three. And the standard is for them to come in at light blue, which is not gonna look great here. So let's change these, let's make them purple. So pump up the red, turn down the green. Close out of that, let's go to our cube. And now we have a nice set of lungs and you can see exactly where those three tumors are, including that little nodule that was all the way at the top there, right at our apex. That's it. You could use the other tools to clean this up a little bit or to modify it however you would like. Let's close out of this one. So in this tutorial, I've taught you a basic skill set of how to use Horos and how to build easy 3D reconstructions. You can now build a reconstruction of a heart or a mediastinal mass just by clicking a couple of buttons. It should take you less than a minute or two. You know how to highlight tumors and make them pop up in different colors, and you know how to build a nice transparent view of the lungs and the airway. Thank you for watching our tutorial. I hope that this was helpful and that you'll now easily be able to build some 3D reconstructions that you can incorporate into not only your teaching, but any video or case submissions that you may have going forward.